Welcome to today's session on formative and summative assessment. Uh, good assessment techniques are more than assigning a grade to your students. Formative assessments can be used throughout the semester to guide instructional decisions, while summative assessments truly measure students' achievement of the course learning objectives. In this workshop, we'll discuss multiple ways that assessment can be used within a course, a variety of assessment options, and some guidelines for designing effective assessments. Second. <clears throat> I'll be your presenter today. My name is Amanda Smothers and I'm the teaching and learning coordinator and I'm sharing responsibilities of the online learning coordinator in the Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning at NIU. I'll be taking questions throughout and at the end of the presentation. So if you have specific questions related to what we're covering during the presentation, feel free to post to the chat thread and I'll discuss them as they come up or you can wait until the Q&A at the end. And uh, in the text chat, if you want to uh, share your department or division, your role, uh, what you hope to get out of this workshop, um, if you didn't enter your name when you logged in, which I think everybody has, uh, make sure to mention who you are as well uh, and let's get to know who all is here. And to use the chat, you'll just click that purple icon in your lower right-hand corner of the screen and then click the chat bubble. And then you just type under say something and press enter on your keyboard to submit your comment. I just realized that my microphone was off and I was just talking. Um, so think of your own discipline. What do you call assessment? Um, how is assessment used in your discipline? Um, so we might have a lot of different terms that we use for how we uh, measure student performance or progress. Um, and th that might be critique or checking, observation, reflection, rating, evaluation. So all of these terms um, are basically um, all terms for assessment. Uh, 
So what terms do you use in your discipline for assessment? And you can share <clears throat> share that in the chat. So if you use any other terms um, for assessment, you know, let us know what those are. And the two different types of assessment, obviously, that we're going to be talking about today are in the title. Um, that would be formative and summative assessment. So formative assessment would be things that you um, maybe don't grade or you give a point to just to make sure that students are doing them. Um, but they're things that are building up to that summative assessment. So they're ways to sort of checkpoints for us to figure out whether uh, our students are on their way to meeting those course objectives, which it would ideally they would do in their summative assessment. And that's the big graded project or or graded assessment. Um, Ellie says that a quiz, test, exam, lab report, pre-labs are the type of assessments that they use. So pretty <clears throat> Pretty self-explanatory with, with those assessments, yes. Um, and those assess types of assessments might be used um, in a lot of different disciplines and STEM disciplines. Um, some reflections. Yeah, reflection is a good way to assess students. Great. All right, so assessment um, generally is the process of gather, gathering data. More specifically, it's the ways that we gather data about our teaching, about our students' learning, and that data provides a picture of a range of activities using different forms of assessment, um, some that we've already mentioned, pretest, observations, examinations. Once you've gathered that data, then you can evaluate the data. Um, evaluation, therefore, is drawing on your judgment to determine the overall value of an outcome based on that assessment data. Um, so that's the analysis of the assessment data. So it's that decision-making process then where we design ways to improve uh, some weaknesses that we might see, um, some gaps or some deficiencies. Um, and within the formative assessment, that's where we want to address those issues before then we uh, move on to having our students um, submit something for a grade. So we want to figure out that, yes, we're doing a good job of teaching. We're reaching our students. They're getting out of, you know, our, our course content what they need to so that they can then perform well on the assessment, whatever that may be. And very importantly, feedback is most effective when it's well-timed. Um, and is as close to the event that it evaluates as possible. So um, we don't just want to assess our students and then gather that data and just keep it for ourselves. We want to give that data back to the students so that they can improve and they know where their gaps or their deficiencies may be uh, ahead of whatever the summative assessment is. So we want to give feedback um, that is timely. We want to give feedback that's going to be useful to students and so if we're not grading something or not giving students comments on an assessment until, you know, three weeks later, how useful is that, especially if they've already submitted, you know, other assessments after that, that they might have benefited from that feedback on, <clears throat> or that they've already submitted, you know, the summative assessment that they, that formative assessment was meant to um, help them prepare for, and how well is it preparing them for that if we're not giving them feedback on how well they're doing. Uh, so formative feedback, again, is used to improve the teaching and learning processes. It's ongoing. It's during learning. Uh, you might think of it as like a knowledge check, a sense of how students are doing, and it allows us opportunities to make those changes and modifications in our teaching, um, as well as giving students an idea of where they're at. Um, so uh, summative feedback then would be provided on, you know, a completed project. That's where we're assessing student learning um, outcomes. So at the end of that project, at the end of that module, in the middle of the semester, at the end of the course. So what we want to do when we're collecting assessments is to tell students at the beginning of the semester 
that assessments will be collected and why they're being collected. And that goes for formative and summative assessments. Um, so that's something that you could include in your syllabus, you know, your schedule of, of assessments. Um, that's something you could include in a course calendar um, outside of the syllabus, however you want to give students that information. You definitely want to give them a heads up of what we're going to be doing to help them prepare for those summative assessments with the formative assessments and then what those summative assessments are, what our goals are for those assessments um, and our outcomes. So ideally, we want to give students information about how they can change based upon their feedback on formative assessment. Um, feedback is going to help our students improve. That's our goal. We want to use feedback. We don't just want to collect it and not use it. And drafts, for example, can be a for form of feedback. We want to do some scaffolding. We want somehow to scaffold those big projects so that we're not saying, here's your big project. It's due in three or four weeks. Go do it. Um, what are some steps that students can take along the way that are going to help them complete that project and complete it successfully? Uh, next, we'll talk about interpreting formative assessment feedback. Um, so both from a student and an instructor perspective, feedback is going to should include both positive and negative information. So um, and negative in meaning constructive. Um, so we want constructive criticism. We want them to know where their gaps are, but we also want them to know what they're doing right. So we want to include that positive information as well. We don't want it to just be positive. We also want it to be constructive. So we want them to be able to know, you know, where they're at, how they can improve. Um, and you could, you know, if you have a very large class and you don't have time or you don't have a TA um, to give some feedback to your students individually, you might let students know that you'll review a sample of feedback uh, to identify trends. Um, and you could also review feedback with colleagues if you're a new faculty um, or a TA and you're not quite sure uh, what the standards are for your discipline. And uh, you want to also obtain feedback for yourself throughout the semester to be able to make appropriate revisions while the course is still going on and then also um, looking forward to the next time that you teach that course. Uh, so you don't want to just be giving your students feedback, you want them to be giving you feedback as well. So some partially that feedback is going to be how well they're doing on those formative assessments and even summative assessments, but also give them opportunities to give you feedback specifically as well. Uh, so sharing feedback with students. You want to thank your students. You want to be open and honest with them. Um, let them know that you'll act on some of the, uh, some of the feedback. Um, share it as quickly as you can. As I mentioned, you want timely feedback. Students need to see that you're acting on that feedback or see that you're acting on those assessments and providing feedback, or they won't see the value in those assessments. So they're going to see them as busy work if they're not getting feedback on them. Um, so they might do them, um, and maybe they'll get some sort of intrinsic motivation uh, when they see that they do help them with the summative assessment just by the fact of doing them. But if you don't provide feedback on them, meaningful, constructive feedback on those formative assessments, they are going to start seeing them as busy work. And they're going to do them to do them rather than doing them with a, a view towards learning. Uh, so let students <clears throat> know that you'll be providing feedback, provide that feedback in a timely manner. Um, and then also when you receive that, when you receive those assessments and you see the feedback that you need to improve or that you need to adjust something in the schedule, let students know with a good amount of, of heads up what changes will be made that are going to impact the course schedule, that will impact assignments. Do you need to spend another week or two on a certain concept because that's integral to them um, understanding what comes in the next unit? So. Be uh, willing to make those adjustments. It might be difficult um, to make those adjustments and make time in the schedule and rework things. Uh, but if it, it's necessary, then definitely be willing to do that and be willing to communicate that with students. 
clearly. So there's a lot of different methods of assessment. Um, how different types of assessments are used is going to determine whether the feedback um, on them is formative or summative in nature. So here's just uh, some of the types of assessments that you might use in a course. You might use an essay, uh, a written exam, a report, case studies, portfolios, uh, projects, response papers, review tasks, performances, presentations, uh, simulations or role playing, um, experiments, reflective journals, open book exams, quizzes, pre-class biographies, critiques. What are some other assessments? Um, and you might already be able to tell which of these might be summative versus formative. So, um, and it might depend on the context too. So an essay might be summative if it's the final version of the essay that your students are submitting and they're going to be getting a grade on it and you're going to be grading with a rubric. Or it could be formative if it's a draft on an essay that they're getting feedback on so that they can revise that essay and improve before they submit it for a grade. Um, something else that we might be able to add to uh, methods of assessment might be peer review, self-review, or self-assessment. Um, so if anybody has any other types of or methods of assessment that they've used, um, then definitely share them with us in the chat as we move through. And I'm sorry about the rapid pace at which we're going, but <laughs> um, there was a little bit of a mix up, as I mentioned earlier, with the scheduling, and it was supposed to be it. Um, later in the day. So um, we got started a little bit late. <clears throat> All right, so just some feedback process considerations. Um, you know, think about whether you want individual or group assessment, um, whether your assessment needs to be more or less detailed. Uh, so individual or group, for example, um, if you're doing a formative assessment, you might have groups working together on the formative assessment to uh, help them help each other as they're learning the process. And then they might, on the summative assessment, work individually, for example. Um, more or less detailed feedback with uh, formative assessment, you probably want to have more detailed feedback because that's where the learning occurs uh, versus summative assessment, that end of unit project or that big exam where you might need less feedback because that's the end of that unit. Um, you could uh, provide feedback in digital format and hard copy, verbal or visual feedback. Um, do you want it to be descriptive or evaluative? Um, is it graded or ungraded? Generally, if it's formative assessment, you don't want it to have too big of an impact on the, on the grade because it's still the learning process. So maybe you just give them credit for doing it um, or for completion. Um, and then for the summative assessment, that's where you're really grading and taking off points and uh, using the, that rubric to grade it. Um, you might also use peer or self assessment as one method um, of assessing students formatively. Um, and then overall reflection, which we've mentioned a couple of times, there might be a reflective process as well, um, which can be built in throughout the semester. So for example, if you're talking about a complex topic, you might wanna stop and give students 30 seconds, a minute to reflect on that topic. Um, that would be an internal form of assessment for students. Um, and that could be connected um, with a plus delta slide, which we um, can talk about, I've got a resource on that for you that I'll send you afterwards, the plus delta. All right, so feedback channels. Um, you wanna use a variety of feedback channels, so maybe not using the exact same type of um, assessment, um, ways of providing feedback uh, throughout the semester. Uh, it should be tailored to whatever the assessment is, um, whatever the course content is, um, but use a variety so that students get experience with multiple different types of, of assessment. Um, it gives you different ways to obtain and provide information. And all of these channels can be connected to different types of assessments, or you can use multiple channels within a single, uh, single type of assessment. Um, so for example, using these as uh, multiple feedback channels um, as formative assessments. 
towards <clears throat> looking towards a single summative assessment. Um, so preterm assessments, for example, what skills do the students have when they begin the class? That'll give you some baseline data on student skills so you'll know where they're at and then you can come up with a plan to get them where they need to go. Um, make sure that you're using appropriate channels, understand um, why you're using that particular channel, how it's going to benefit students. Um, some are going to be more effective than others. Some people respond to different channels differently than others. Um, so that's why you do want to have a variety of feedback channels um, of ways of receiving that information, that feedback about your course and about your lessons, about student learning, uh, because students are going to respond differently to different feedback channels. So some examples, preterm assessment, group work, uh, personal visits or conferences, office hours, email, you can use Blackboard tools, um, which we're all pretty familiar with now, uh, synchronous or asynchronous discussions, um, telephone, uh, memos, body language, you know, there, there's a, a bunch of different ways that you can communicate with students, have them communicate with you, um, and get that information, that data that you need about student learning. So some um, classroom feedback strategies. Um, first, using nonverbal feedback. This is obviously within a face-to-face -face classroom. Um, you might be able to do this uh, to an extent with synchronous online learning. If students have their cameras turned on, you might be able to, to tell some nonverbal feedback. Uh, it's more limited than in a face-to-face -face setting, obviously. Um, but remember that you're also providing nonverbal feedback to students. Um, so give them, you know, positive reinforcement. Um, be aware of what you're communicating nonverbally to. Um, also model how you want students to participate in class. Uh, so, for example, modeling questioning strategies um, to encourage that active, um, that active participation. Um, also providing written feedback is a good way to to give feedback to your students and then have them give feedback to you as well. Um, responses should be coherent thoughts, complete sentences, um, so that you can ensure that students are providing the feedback that you're expecting them to give to you. And then finally, uh, something that might seem small, but it goes a long way, is thanking students publicly, using their name, affirming their contributions. Uh, so it might be, within a synchronous class discussion, either online or face-to-face, -face, um, or it could be in an online discussion forum, uh, but provide a comment rather than just a grade. Show them that you are engaged um, in their learning in that discussion, um, particularly if it's an asynchronous online discussion, because sometimes it might seem a little bit more detached um, then, you know, you might be able to give them that nonverbal feedback or, uh, you know, nod your head or, or affirm verbally more so in a, a synchronous uh, discussion, whereas asynchronous, you're going to have to do a little bit more work to show them that you're affirming them. So use their name, affirm their, con their specific contributions, um, you know, try to... <clears throat> Uh, try to comment on each student, you know, at least a few times during the course of the semester, specifically um, with substantive feedback in an online class. Uh, journal reflection is one way to get feedback from students. Um, you can ask students to type in submit uh, a journal reflection every few weeks or every unit. Uh, about their cognitive and affective experiences in the class. Um, so you could, you know, grade it with something as simple as check, check, plus, check, minus, or full credit, half credit, no credit, um, just to show that they've given some effort towards it um, and that they've done it rather than giving them an actual grade for their reflection and their feedback. Um, so some examples of questions you might ask, how have you internalized what you've read in the, the course readings? Um, how do you relate to what you've read or learned uh, to your life experiences? How do you feel about the material? How do you feel about my presentation of the material? 
Um, so any questions that you think are going to be helpful for you in assessing the course uh, and um, in improving that course as you go along uh, as it's happening. Another example would be the minute paper. Um, so <clears throat> you can give them a set of questions, give them one minute to respond to whichever questions uh, they feel compelled to respond to, um, and have them respond as concisely as possible. Obviously, they're going to need to if it's only a one minute paper. Um, so some examples of questions that you might ask, what are two or three or four significant or useful concepts or topics that you've learned during the class? Um, what questions remain uppermost in your mind? What could the instructor have done differently to help you understand or learn today's lecture material? Um, what can you as a student do to help me as the instructor increase my classroom participation or, or do better on exams, help your team members? Um, so, you know, any questions that you think are relevant um, and applicable to that particular day. So this would be as opposed to that journal, which you're covering a few weeks of classwork. You know, this is something more like today or this week. Um, another name for for something like this would be like the muddiest points so with the end. You know, what's the muddiest point? What did you not understand from today? And then you read those after class and then determine where you need to make adjustments in your next class. Um, another example would be a mid class assessment. Uh, so this would be um, getting some feedback from from your your students about how they're doing so far that semester. Um, you might ask which of the following experiences related to the course has most helped you to learn um, and then have them rate them on a scale of one to five or one to ten. Um, or however many numbers you have, one to eight, if you've got eight different things listed, um, and you might ask them, you know, how helpful were readings in textbook, lecture, PowerPoint slides, uh, whole class discussions, small group activities or small group discussions, um, uh, activities, right, completing activities with peers outside of class, using the computer lab, uh, talking with the instructor outside of class. So anything that you've incorporated into your course um, <clears throat> as formative assessment or as learning support. Um, this is your opportunity to get some, some mid-semester feedback on that semester, uh, with, through this mid-class assessment, this survey that you give to students. Um, in Blackboard Original Course View, you can deploy a survey and that will show you who has submitted it, um, but won't show you you know, which student submitted which survey, which is great to keep it anonymous and, and honest. Um, in Ultra Course View, there isn't the option to do a survey yet. Um, they will be adding that eventually. Um, but you could use something like Qualtrics, <clears throat> which we have available um, for, uh, for NIU um, faculties and staff. So you can use a create a Qualtrics survey you can send it out to individual students, um, send them each an invite, um, or you can send, you know, just post the link to it um, and then have some sort of password or some sort of end phrase at the end of the survey that students can submit to a Dropbox online or to a little one question quiz online so that you know who has completed it without seeing those individual students' answers. So however you want to, um, to do that. Some other questions that you might ask in the mid-class assessment um, is to ask students to list any topics that they're confused about that you've covered in class um, or what suggestions you have, uh, students have for how that you could improve the course, um, what suggestions they have for how they can improve in their performance in the course. So what do they need to do differently? Um, and then maybe a topic or two that they want to be included in the course that's currently not in the syllabus to give them some, maybe some creative freedom too. Um, you might also want to reflect yourself. So you might have, you know, daily reflection or weekly or, you know, unit reflection or just even at the end of the semester reflecting on what went well uh, throughout the semester. And then what you could change, what you could improve, what you could fix um, ahead of the next semester or the next class or the next week. 
uh, whenever and how, however often you're taking this um, self-assessment, this reflection. Um, some feedback strategies for grading. Um, first, communicate how students will be graded. Give them that information ahead of time. Don't make them wonder how they're going to be graded at an assessment. Um, find the good in what they've done and then raise the bar. So there's always going to be uh, room for improvement. Even if something is good, an essay is good, it meets the bare minimum um, or, you know, it goes slightly above, you know, you can still give them feedback for how they could raise that bar even further. Um, provide useful and relevant comments <clears throat> on students' work. Offer concrete suggestions for improvement. Uh, be equitable. Uh, so one way to do that is to use grading rubrics to try to um, keep your grading as objective as possible. Of course, it's not going to be completely objective because you've created this assessment, you've created the grading rubric, um, and so there's always going to be some level of subjectivity there. But um, at least using a grading rubric um, his, makes your grading a little bit more consistent when you're grading summative assessments. Um, grade in the first person, use I, return that graded work quickly so that students can learn from it, and make sure that you're acknowledging the receipt of your received assignments. So um, as students submit assignments, acknowledge that you've received them. Um, All right. And let's see <laughs> Sorry about the dog barking. Um, so also, if your grading is going to be delayed, make sure that you let students know that. Have a grading policy um, or a feedback policy for assessments, for formative assessments, um, ideally within a week after they've been submitted, if not sooner. Um, particularly if it's, you know, a shortened course, like an eight week course, then you definitely want to get that feedback to them sooner um, because everything's going to be condensed. But, you know, if you're going to be going beyond that week or whatever your self-imposed deadline is for returning assignments, um, let students know if grading is going to be delayed so that they don't panic. And so you don't get a bunch of emails from students wondering what their grades are, what their feedback is. Um, and then give them a timeline for when they can expect that from you. Um, for written assignments and projects, um, consider the purpose of that project or that assignment and where it fits into the process. Um, so for example, um, where does this formative assessment fit within the process leading up to that scaffolding process leading up to that that summative assessment. Um, also resist marking the easy surface issues. Focus globally early. Focus on concepts, um, the, the higher order concerns as they're called rather than sentence level issues, grammar punctuation. Um, those issues you can maybe comment on um, later but you want to to show students that the content is the most important thing early on and then, you know, that proofreading stuff comes later. Um, also use draft work for quick feedback that reflects your assessment style. So what you could do is use the same rubric um, with the scores removed, um, but just the descriptors. So use that same grading rubric that you're going to be using to grade their final assessment um, or their final version of the, the written assignment or the project. Um, and use that to provide feedback on the draft work uh, so that they know exactly where they stand there and what they can do to get to where they want to go. Um, and then rubrics, as I've mentioned already, assist in grading the summative assessments. Um, but like I just mentioned, they can be used to give students a picture of where they should improve in a formative assessment. But I do recommend removing those, those scores so that they're not looking at the number or the percentage that they might earn, um, and instead looking at those descriptors and reading them and figuring out uh, where their work falls in those levels of performance for each one of the criteria. So some more tips um, for providing feedback on written assessment. Um, don't bleed on student papers, so don't use a red pen or red 
um, type if you're doing it electronically. Use blue, use black, use pencil. Um, provide um, a reasonable amount of feedback on the paper. Um, so what are the most important things that you want the student to address ahead of the next draft or uh, ahead of the final assessment? What do you want students um, to look at? What do you want them? What do you want them to focus on first? Um, so don't comment on everything um, when you're providing feedback on a written uh, formative assessment, um, because then a student will get very um, overwhelmed with the amount of work that they have to do. So pick out a few things that are really important for them to, to address um, and have them address those and then maybe have them submit uh, a second draft when they've finished addressing those issues so that you can give them further feedback. Um, don't correct their papers. Provide different levels of detail at different phases of the process of writing. Um, so if, for example, thesis statement first and then once they've addressed all those higher order concerns, maybe you give them some feedback on grammar you know, you have an issue with um, comma splices or run-on sentences are a problem. Here's a model of how to correct a run-on sentence. Um, but that comes later once they've addressed all of those higher order concerns. Uh, grade projects for what is important for the learning. And again, that's where rubrics might help. What is, what is the most important for the learning? Um, have that be the criteria on your grading rubric. And then also resist the tendency to free write on student papers or use comments that suggest haste or irritation or lack of planning. Um, one other tip is to provide directive um, or provide supportive rather than directive feedback. Um, you want to help and support students, not necessarily control them. So you want to develop a supportive, constructive tone. So we want to limit directive language, like you should or you must or you, you have to. Um, you should try harder to improve your spelling. And instead, use supportive communication. What can you do to help your student? I've noticed you're struggling with spelling. How can I help? Or what resources can I provide? Um, so give them that supportive, that constructive tone rather than telling them what to do. Ask questions. Um, maybe use the language of your rubric or use the language of your assignment prompt uh, to get students to think more critically about their own work rather than you telling them what they need to do to improve it. Um, one way to maybe make uh, your own feedback process a little bit more, um, uh, a little bit quicker might be to use technology for your feedback rather than, you know, printing out a student paper, writing on it, and then handing that back to them if you're in a face-to-face -face class or um, if you're in an online course, maybe scanning your handwritten comments and then sending that to them, which can be very time consuming. Um, you can record your feedback. You can record video or audio feedback. Um, you can allow students to give their feedback to you, their reflection feedback, for example, in video or audio format. Um, you can use digital portfolios. Um, you can use software. So for you know, a quiz um, or a survey, um, you might use test banks, um, question banks. Um, or an assessment inventory. Um, you can use a Blackboard discussion board to provide feedback. Um, you can use a help forum for student-to-student -student feedback, and that discussion board can also um, be student-to-student -student feedback. So, um, you know, if you have an online asynchronous discussion um, and you want students to respond to each other, how do you want them to respond to each other in a constructive way so that they're giving each other feedback on maybe their understanding of whatever the course concept is that they're discussing? Um, the Blackboard app also allows for providing video and audio feedback on assignments. Um, you can have a help forum for um, students to get feedback from you as well. Um, so you can have one for student to student. You can have one for student to instructor. Um, even if you have a student to student one only, you want to follow that forum daily too, just to make sure that there isn't any misinformation going on. You also want to establish a feedback policy. How are you going to handle assignments that were incorrectly submitted? 
Um, so for example, they submitted it to the wrong Dropbox online or the wrong discussion board. Um, how are you going to handle that? What's your policy going to be for that? Um, and what's a policy um, that allows you to manage your own workload while also providing some grace to students? Um, establish a feedback protocol and review that protocol is necessary. How well is it working? Do you need to adjust that? Um, set parameters and guidelines for submission and grading. Um, as I mentioned before, give them a deadline for when you're going to re um, return assignments to them with feedback uh, or grades. <coughs> Establish email etiquette. What's the etiquette for your class for emailing? What's language? Answer timing. How quickly are you going to get back to students? How quickly should they get back to you when you email them? Um, how will you address email questions that were already answered in the syllabus or other means like frequently asked questions on Blackboard? Um, one way that I've address that a little bit is by having my students take a syllabus test at the beginning of the semester with some of those frequently asked questions um, and it's open syllabus so that they learn how to navigate that syllabus um, and we don't get this as many of those emailed questions and then also provide private frequent updates on students class progress uh, so that can be you know through keeping your grades updated on blackboard um, providing timely feedback, uh, having uh, a few individual conferences throughout the semester to talk one-on-one -on -one with students, however that works for you and for your class. Uh, now let's talk about a few teaching-related feedback approaches. These are focused on faculty. So you could get feedback um, from us in the Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning uh, or by peers in your department. Um, you can look at the course evaluation ahead of the semester to make sure that you know what you'll be evaluated on. Um, after you can uh, complete an after class reflection, how did the course go? What went well? What didn't go well? How did students react? What could be revised? Um, and then attach that to your syllabus and complete it so it can provide insights for the semester as you're planning your syllabus for the following semester or for the following year, depending on how often you teach that same class again. Um, so again, some different ways of getting this kind of teaching related feedback, um, teaching assessment would be classroom observations. Um, and like I mentioned, you know, the Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning does some classroom observations. There's a process involved and it's kind of a lengthy process where you can, you know, ask a colleague, hey, can you come into my classroom or can you look at my online class and give me some feedback um, on, you know, navigability or how I'm delivering this course material. Um, <clears throat> you can use small group instructional diagnosis, uh, consultations, you can audio or videotape lectures and then have someone assess those, um, complete that after class reflection for yourself, uh, and maybe even take the course evaluation yourself. So the one that students take, take it yourself and see what grade you might give yourself. So I'm kind of going to be flying here. Might skip through a little bit. Um, okay, we're almost done. So again, here's just a little bit of information about formative feedback, um, which again occurs during the learning process. Here are just some examples of types of formative feedback that you might use. Uh, to scaffold student learning or to assess student learning um, through the learning process before they reach that summative assessment, that culminating assessment. So you might use quizzes, tests, assignments, or journals, um, discussions, and those can, as I mentioned, be synchronous or asynchronous, reflections, um, results of performance early, and then immediate assistance to encourage and motivate students um, in, or to, to help them pivot. Um, improve retention of information. It also increases participation and aims to improve the work that's being assessed ahead of when students are going to be graded on those assessments. Um, and then summative feedback occurs at the end of an instruction. So it be at the end of the module, at the end of a lecture, at the end of a semester. Um, that might be a, clinic, a clinical, a lab, 
a studio or a field experience, a final exam or a final journal, um, reflective activities that happen later, um, either <coughs> just before a summative assessment or just before like a major assessment, like in um, a final exam or just after asking students to reflect on their learning. Um, projects, reviews, portfolios, um, what summative feedback does is it helps assess knowledge, skills, and attitudes. It helps us examine qualitative and quantitative evidence generated about student competence. It uses evidence to improve the learning of current and future students, and it helps us look at our own teaching practice as well. So finally, feedback is a form of response to a task. It monitors progress, and it can improve teaching and learning. And all forms of teaching should include feedback and uh, both of those types of assessment, formative and summative assessment. So here are just a list of all those, a ton of resources, and I will send you this list um, in a follow-up email. But I wanna make sure that we have at least a few minutes for questions. So if you have any questions, you can either post in the chat or you can raise your hand to use your microphone, whichever way you feel most comfortable with. And if you don't have any questions, that's okay too. Um, preferred feedback strategies. Um, I think it just depends on the course. Um, I tend to do a lot of scaffolding because when I'm not in the Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning, I'm also part-time teaching um, English courses, mostly composition, but some literature as well. So with composition, we do a lot of scaffolding, a lot of formative assessment um, and fewer summative assessments uh, to help students grow and improve. Um, and I try to use a variety of formative assessments leading up to each summative assessment so that uh, whatever works for one student might not work for another student. So I wanna make sure that all students are covered um, and that they all have been exposed to strategies that might help them and work for them and that they can reuse in the future. <clears throat> um, does scaffolding improve the overall paper? I, I do think that scaffolding improves the overall paper. Um, so we do, you know, I might do pre-writing um, I might ask them specific questions. I might do outlining um, or a research evaluation, source evaluation assignment. Um, and I do think that scaffolding and providing those steps along the way really does help with those long writing assignments and students find that it helps too. And I've seen that in their reflections, which I, I do reflections as well. Um, so that, that seems to help students a lot um, to break up those longer writing assignments. And it also helps so that they're not for the most part, not waiting until the, the night before a paper is due before writing it and even thinking about writing it. So they've already thought about it. They've already done a lot of prep work for it. Um, resources or strategies about assessment and feedback that work best for online courses. I can definitely send some, some resources your way in my post um, workshop email. So I will send you some, some resources and strategies um, for online courses too. And just for assessment in general, I, I find that meaningful assessment um, is what students respond the best to. Great, any other questions as we're kind of ending our session today? Our rapid fire session. All right, well, thank you for attending today's presentation on formative and summative assessment. Again, I'm Amanda Smothers, um, and I'm in the Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning at Northern Illinois University, so feel free to contact our center if you have any questions about assessment um, or any questions about teaching in general and or instructional technology, and we'd be happy to help you out with that.